and the why he become interested in China, and the why he would like to go to China during the war time. That's why it's very difficult. So what is the real power behind that? The motivation behind that? So I thought that's probably a good one. And uh, during this lecture, I will show you the picture and uh, how the Joseph Newton developed his ideas, his opinion about the Chinese science and civilization. But then, and uh, Joseph Newton already died 20 years ago. And now we are the new generation. And how we carry on his, you know, his, not career, but it's a, it's a legacy, really. And his research. So what we should do? So we have to, when I talk to people, they people say, oh, you're talking about the Joseph Needham's uh, question or Needham's puzzle. Is that, is that all? And I also ask my, myself. So I'm trying to deal with these kind of issues, right? And uh, I was warning, you know, it's, uh, for our students, their concentration can only last for 40 minutes. So I uh, try to, you know, and uh, uh, finish my lecture within 40 minutes. Please, you know, help me to track the time. Right? And uh, all right, so I think it's our channel already introduced you know, Joseph Needham and uh, his questions very well. Seems I have a more question than you, right? Look at it here. And I ask it too many questions, right? But who is Joseph Needham? What a silly question. Right? That is, uh, and also, why he's so special? And also, why all of us would like to spend 40 minutes or one hour in this room to listen to about a man who died almost long a long time ago. Why? So you can ask that. So there's his other questions about uh, Joseph Needham and his life and his uh, uh, research and his big, big project like science and civilization in China. So when you talk about Joseph Needham, you just say, oh, that's just the guy who wrote a big book, Science and Civilization in China. How big, you ask? How big, right? It's, uh, it's like this thick, this one, or this. Okay, we'll find it out, right? And why we talk about him today is so interesting, it's, it's so uh, necessary or important. Okay, so this is Joseph Needham. I'm going to talk, you know, three parts of my lecture. First, I will give a very brief introduction about Joseph Needham's life and his SCC project, and then uh, talking about Joseph Needham's uh, intellectual heritage. And last night, I just almost stuck in this intellectual heritage, and I got uh, very fortunate to talk to Professor Francesca Bray, and she's sitting here. And he gave me, she gave me a very good advice, and she said you don't need to talk about other people's opinion about Joseph Needham. You're just talking about what you understood of the Joseph Needham. I thought, oh, that's it. So I got a very good presentation today. Please look forward to it. And, and then, I, because I'm the director of the Needham Institute, so I have to talk about the Institute. Uh, whether or not you're interested, I don't care, right? But I have to talk about it. Sorry. So this is my first part. So this is a. Uh, Dr. Joseph Needham's, and uh, as a scientist, you know, it's early days. When you're talking about Joseph Needham, you have to realize he's a really tall guy, you know, he's very handsome, attractive to ladies, right? And, and also, there's one writer, famous writer, write a book, and he gave the title, say, The Man Who Loves China. So that's the image, public image. You know, but what we want to talk about today is about his intellectual contribution to our world. It's not just the popular image, right? We want to be a little bit academic, right? Because we are the students. We are the scholars, really. So this is, a, this is a very important about uh, his source and the region 
about the civilization. And uh, because this is really important, his vision and his idea and uh, about civilization, about the history, even now still inspiring many, encouraging many generations, many young people like me or even you, I hope. Yeah. So that is why we are going to talk about him. So that is his family. His mother is a musician and his father is a doctor. He has a very good education. And uh, look at him. You know, he has a, such a self, you know, I think I said. You know, look at him. He's really special. Look at his picture. It's only him put his uh, arms like this way. So he's really talented. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And then he's uh, getting married, you know, like a normal, just really normal age, get married. Okay, that's fine. He got a very beautiful lady as his wife. You know, he did so well. He's a good young man. And look at here, he's a uh, university. It's just like an ordinary university student, you know. He's got well with students and get married and he has to go with his wife to work in the laboratory here. You know, he has a dress in the 20, 1925, right? And then look at it, the happy yeah, scientist working in the laboratory, the biochemistry. So he did that. He did so well. Look at here. It's 1931. You know, he was born in the 1900. Uh, so 1931 means he's 31 years old. Look at what he did. Three volumes is a chemical embryology. So he's the father of this subject. 31. I just remember where I am. 31. This is so good. So he's a great scholar. So he did, and, and also the 41, he became the fellow of Royal Society. You have to realize this is a very highest academic title, especially in Britain. I don't say in the world, right? In Britain, really important. It's top honor as a scholar, you know, in Britain. So, if he carry on in this way, that's fine. He's a great scientist. I'm sure maybe he got a Nobel Prize, really. But in 1937, in Cambridge come this young lady, he's called Lu Guizhen. He come to Cambridge as a PhD student, as Dr. Needham's wife student studying the biochemistry. And this young lady is Lu Guizhen, and challenged him because Joseph Needham has a strong interest in the history of science. He tried to express the idea, look at all the science all developed in the West, in the Western Europe. You know, the China has no contributions to the world. I think the Lu Guizhen challenged this idea and surprised him. He said, you know, the China is such a non-history civilization, has a great contribution to the world. So that is really got curiosity to Joseph Needham. He's got interest in him, right? And because he has such a strong interest in China, so he began to study Chinese. 